Hey, welcome back to Peak Plays. Here we are playing Final Fantasy IV, the Pixel Remaster. We're drinking coffee. I'm filming this one right after I just filmed the previous one that you saw. Uh, so I'm still sunburned. Uh, and my tooth is still wiggly, but we're living the life. We want to go back in the castle. Let's make it happen. good and just it feels sort of like like a like a dopey sort of sound but it's so driving and cool that like it doesn't feel it just feels like yeah all right you know i don't know i don't know how to explain it you're fighting gold bells too take the treasures upstairs i hope it helps okay can we find any is there anything in any of these pots maybe Ha 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 ha! Bacchus is cider for strong boys who like a strong drink. Oh dear. <gasps> Naming way. The chest contained high potion. I don't think I need to rename anybody. Yeah, everybody's good on names. What on earth? There we go. Black belt gee. Oh, baby, yeah. So good for my strong boy. Oh. Ether, wonderful. Love to love to see it. Elixir. Cool. Wait, what is here? <gasps> More dwarves. All swell. Just in case you're wondering, all's well over here too. Don't worry about it, guys. <gasps> Ooh. Should have explored before I bought stuff. Should have done it. King Jot wants you to put our treasures to good use. Is that supposed to be like armor or something? Tell me where the stuff is in there. More Bacchus cider, which is a very dwarven thing to have. Oops. To have lying around. Uh, just kind of fits with the lore. Okay. Power armlet. Ooh, that's gonna make somebody pretty strong. Yeah. Oh, but oh. I mean, it only ups my attack by the one, but it makes my evasion go up. So, but it makes my defense go down. Let's see what it would do for Kane. Yeah, I'll give him the power armlet. That's a pretty cool thing to have, though. If I do say so myself. Elixir. Silver Hourglass. Ether. Great, 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 great. <laughs> Geisel Greens. Oh, good. I can summon a uh, fat chocobo whenever I darn well please. I forget what he... Doesn't he just store things? We gotta we gotta bring him out at least once. Because we gotta hear this tune. See? It doesn't really... Matter. I don't really need to deposit things. I think it's mostly just an inventory like managing system which is cool um but it doesn't really do anything yeah um uh, love you love your work you have permission from the king then you may enter what is this what am i entering
Lally ho! Wait, I don't know where I'm going. Oh, that's like the back exit or something like that, right? This dwarven castle is big and cool. This is the infirmary. Oh, we dwarves are tough. But even we get hurt once in a while. <laughs> I'm getting better. I think I secretly make all Scottish accents sound like this, and that's not real. Um, that's not <laughs> how it works. Oh, and we're back here. Okay, cool. I know where I must go. I, I do have permission from the king. King Jot. Jot. <clears throat> All right. What's going on here? Oh, no. Those were opened already. Take care. There are gigantic cannons in the Tower of Babel. So I remember when I when I did this uh, for Pete Plays, I did it on um, a MacBook, uh, like a like an original MacBook. Not original, but like they don't make just normal MacBooks anymore, right? There's MacBook Pro, there's MacBook Air, but there used to be the MacBook that was like white, right? Um, and very sort of rounded, like beveled edges and everything. I did it on my MacBook before I bought my gaming PC, uh, my first one about four or five months into doing Pete Plays. Um, and I remember because I started this game, Cottage, nice, Cottage, Cottage. I started this game on the plane from Indianapolis back to LA where I was living at the time. And I got all the way to Mist. Uh, I was playing it on my laptop and I realized, wait, why am I not doing this for Pete Plays? So I actually started, I bet if I went back and, and looked at that video, the first episode would be me like leaving Mist. Um, so I missed a, a missed <laughs> a bunch of stuff at the beginning of the game. <clears throat> but all that to say, I was playing this on my laptop, which is wild to think, um, that I didn't just make that thing explode by running a game and OBS and doing all of my editing, oh boy. Um, but this was a part where I did a lot of grinding to level up. I uh, just walked around on the outside and did grinding. I think I did an episode, but I also did a lot of just, like, off-camera. The monsters in the underworld are fearsome. Be careful. So, why don't... I don't know. Let's just kind of see what we got going on. Dwarven base. Into his base! They knew! They knew... The last time I played this was before I knew Into His Base as a joke. I'm brave, but that's nothing compared to how brave you are. You guys are insane! Sorry about that. <laughs> um, Rubicante, the strongest. Why? He's just, he's an adopted dwarf. Rubicante, the strongest of the four elemental lords, is at the Tower of Babel. Come back in one piece. He who fights and runs away lives to see another day. Oh, okay. You sneak into the tower while we distract them with our takes. Inside the pot is the water of life. Drink some before you go. Wish I'd known that before I spent 600 bucks on a hotel room. All right. Well, let's get outside and kind of see what we're dealing with here. Yo. I don't... There's a lot going on here. And there's a lot of stuff down here that we can't get to until we get the Enterprise back. Um, and there's some optional stuff, but we're going to do all of it because I want to get... I want to beat Leviathan. I want to beat um, Bahamut um, and do like the whole Rat's Tail quest, uh, which is similar to FF1. I want to do it all. Um, but I kind of don't know where I'm going. It's not there. I think I'm supposed to walk up and around this direction. So I'll just kind of make my way here. Goblin Captain. Okay. Yo! I can throw the axe. That rules. Armadillo. Oh, he's not that tough. 
I don't. What's it? What is it that the bratty kid in um, Jurassic Park at the very beginning says? I don't think he looks that scary. And then, uh, you know, Dr. Sam Elliott or whatever. Not Sa Wait, Sam Elliott? That's not his name. What's his name? He terrorizes a child by telling him that uh, a Velociraptor is going to um, rip open his innards. Whoops! Not a kid's movie! I got nightmares from Jurassic Park when I was a little kid. Can you believe the first Jurassic Park movie came out in 1994? Magnetoris. Um, wild. Absolute. Dude, we bizzlebop these guys! I'm not worried at all! 1994. I was six. And then I saw it, I think I saw it in like 95 or 96 when it would have come out on TV. Because I don't think we rented, or maybe we did rent, the VHS. Back when Blockbuster was big. Blockbuster was big for big boys. Um, what does that mean? <laughs> Um, that's it. Blockbuster was big for big boys. <laughs> the stuff that comes out of my mouth when I am playing video games. Is this going to hurt me? Oh, no, it's just set dressing. Okay. Ah, there's the tower. I could go. Can I go in the tower? I don't know. Yo, lots of bad guys here, but we're gonna beat them. Go wreck it! Probably overdoing it on the Gaia's Wrath a little bit, but that took a grand total of like 18 seconds, so I'm I'm not gonna grind, but I am gonna walk back um, and get some heal juice out of the, out of our little pot um nice boy i would love gina christina to have just a bit more hit points but man those summons hit hard and i love it i just love it um We're going to walk back, and I'm going to make my way back here without summoning every time. Um, just because, like, look at the damage I'm doing with the axes. Like, holy moly. Um, I feel good about my party right now. Um, which means I didn't do any grinding. And I, I wonder if they evened out the leveling in the game just a hair. I'm not sure, right? I'm going off of memories from five years ago um, when I played this game, but um, I don't know. Uh, I feel like I'm much more prepared for the battles that I'm going into. We really overkilled that one little guy. <laughs> 2097, great year. I'll probably not be alive and that's okay. I can deal with my impending mortality. Or, my mortality is not impending. My demise is impending. Um, but that's always impending. Hey, do you want to get philosophical for a second? Um, several philosophers, Socrates, a French guy whose name I don't recall, um, uh, from, oh, darn. I think she'll be okay. Yo, don't love these guys. What's going on here? Um, what was I saying? Oh man, we are gonna have to Asuna hard. Everybody's turning to stone. Okay, so since they didn't get me all the way, does that go away? Okay, I don't think that continues, so I should not have to Asuna anybody. Um, okay. Um, philosophy, which, if this is your first time in the show, first of all, welcome. I love that you're here. Um, and second of all, uh, philosophy is 
preparation for death. Um, and not in like a morbid way, right? The point is not to just be like, ooh, we're all gonna die, right? The, I, I think that the purpose of philosophy is to grapple with the human condition. The human condition is that we are conditioned. And at least in our current state, um, that means that we will stop being embodied in the way that we experience our embodiment primarily, right? Um, and that is, ooh, a mithril hammer? Is that gonna be any better? I don't think so, actually. Oh, you know what? That's a that's a Sid thing, right? Like I live in a body, and I experience what we call consciousness, and I can like interpolate myself based on other people's consciousnesses or what I perceive to be other people's consciousnesses. Just consciousness. I added so many s's to that word, but like um, the reason we do philosophy is because we have to grapple with that fact, implicitly or explicitly. Right, like my life is doing things in the face of the fact that I will not be doing those things anymore. I think I was talking about this a little bit at the end of FF6, but just like, I don't know, that means a lot to me to think about, how did I get here? Not really sure. That means a lot to me to think about like, hey, I I don't know what happens. I take Socrates and the Phaedo, uh, really seriously as well like he basically says i'm not afraid of death i'm not gonna like invite it right because socrates died when he was 70 because he was put to death by the state right i'm just talking now we're gonna just take a short little break it's okay let's just hang out um he didn't you know he wasn't reckless but he was like all right seems like it's my time i'm not afraid of death not because uh, death can't be scary, but he said, I don't know what's there and I can't be afraid of something that I don't know what it is. And that is true. This is Kierkegaard. If you don't know the object of your trepidation, it's not fear. It's anxiety, which is a, just another word for the human condition, right? I am conditioned and I'm condemned to choice, right? So what Socrates says is, I'm not gonna be afraid of it. I'm gonna go to it. And he had faith that there would be something for him. His soul would go somewhere because he, you know, he was making these arguments for the immortal soul. I, I say had faith, like to the best of his knowledge, he thought there was something else and he wasn't entirely sure. And he wasn't gonna be too big of a jerk about it. Although Socrates was a bit of a butt. Um, but he's like, look, this is it for me right now. And let's all just be cool about this because I've spent my life pursuing the practicing and teaching of philosophy so that I can be prepared to meet this moment with the wonder and the gravity and the respect and the joy that it deserves, right? Um, he actually admonishes his followers for crying. Uh, they're upset and he's like, he's kind of a jerk. He's like, what are you guys, a bunch of women? Like go out with the women, right? Remember it's ancient Greeky times, so they're all pretty misogynist. But like, what he means is, th this doesn't feel to me like the kind of thing that I would be sad about. If I were sad, it meant I didn't do a good job in my life of pursuing the practicing and teaching of philosophy. And I did. And I think that that was because I followed the God, Apollo. Um, so anyway, I, all that to say, I don't know where I was going with this, but I like this show and I like doing these things and I like talking about stuff. I I think that's, I think that's it. I just, I'm feeling good. I'm just feeling positive. Let's punch this guy. <laughs> oh, okay, we're almost here. I think we have to go in the castle. Yeah, they're just, they're punching each other real hard. Um, oh man, I've got just like a couple more minutes. Why don't we just grind and goof off for a minute and then we'll go in the tower at the beginning of the next episode. I'm gonna get away from these guys. 
Um, walk around in this magma field. I think that's part of the reason I like JRPGs and video games in general that have these kinds of plots that like... I don't know, maybe it's a bit of a trope to do the whole like, Warriors of Light and they're trying to protect the world from darkness and bark bark. Maybe, but also... Um, I think that there's something... There's like a training in hope, right? Um... This is this is similar to the kind uh, to the kind of language that um, Miriam Kabat talks about when she talks about your activism must be rooted in hope. Like hope is a skill. Hope is something you have to work at. And like, call me, you know, uh, a I don't know a simp for capitalism or neoliberalism or something. Most people do not call me that, but like, I am not resigned to all of the coolest things that humans have come up with having to be used in ways that promote the opposite of liberation. And to me, like video games can do that, can, can promote liberation, right? Like, we have to be careful, and I don't think that, like, just because I play some video games, it means I'm going to be so cool and progressive or a good person. But, like, when I engage it in a certain way, and I hope that I'm engaging it in this way, and I hope that I'm encouraging other people to engage it in this way, um, I want to think about what does this game teach me about being hopeful? What does this game teach me about being a better person who cares about people? Some games do that, and some games are just games. Right? Like, I don't know. Um, Vampire Survivors? I'm not taking any grand philosophical lesson from Vampire Survivors, right? Be it's fun, because fun, but fun is part of hope, right? Like, if liberation were purely like the absence of oppression, that in and of itself, I do not think would be that great. But the cool thing is that like liberation is the presence of positive habits and thriving and 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 things that are beautiful and, and exciting and, and like build people up, right? And I think telling a cool story where a bunch of people struggle through hard stuff and overcome difficulties together right which ff4 definitely is if you haven't seen the end of the game you know hold on to your pants because that's that's the whole message at the end of it is just like we do this together we are here together um and i love that that's how that's how i feel we're gonna punch these guys and then we'll be done um thanks for hanging out with me I'm just feeling a bit of a way right now. Maybe it's because I, I just drank coffee and I haven't eaten anything and I slept in and just having one of those days where you're like, yeah, stuff is okay. I haven't, I haven't gotten to all the nonsense I got to do for the rest of the day. So I'm just enjoying just being undirected happiness. I don't know. Um, here we go. We are gonna... Stay in a tent. Oh, no. Tent first. Let's just... <laughs> let's just sleep in a tent right in front of all the people shooting each other. Totally fine. Uh, hey. Like I said, thanks for hanging out. Love you. Love your work. Hope you're having a great day. Um, it's good you're here. It's good you're in the world. And we'll see you next time on Pete Plays. Bye.